Okay, so now we're going to do the piece that is going to clone the repos on GitHub into our local system. So here's what I want you to understand, and I've kind of mentioned it before, but until now we've been working on GitHub through the web interface to a browser. And so what we're going to do is set up our local dev environment. And what that means is from here on out, we should only really be using our local uh, VS code and Git setup in order to push or to update code out on VS or out on GitHub. Okay. So I just want you to understand that what we're about to do, I don't recommend after you've done this to modify anything out here on VS on, <laughs> why am I calling it VS code on GitHub? Okay. Because we're going to clone it. We're going to take this setup. We're going to build uh, the repo on our local system. And then you'll learn how to do what's called the Git workflow in order to move updates from your local computer to GitHub. Okay. Hopefully it'll become more clear as we do it. So the first step I recommend doing is creating a folder because you're going to have one folder on your local system that will have the three repos. So it'll be one repo for the private, one for the public, and one for your GitHub IO or your pages repo, okay, which is in your own uh, profile under GitHub. But in this case, all three of them will be located in a folder. And I do this because it just makes managing these things a little easier. So however you're comfortable um, creating folders on your local system, I'm going to go to Explorer. Okay, I'm going to minimize this. Now, there's obviously many way where you many places, but in general, it's either you put things on the desktop if you're those kind of people or you put it on documents. Now, I'm typically somebody that uses documents. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new folder. Uh, I happen to just so I didn't have to type it all, but it's CIT82, the class name SP for now, by the way, look in Canvas because it may be a future semester or it may be a different class that you're doing, but I'm just showing this as a demonstration. Okay, so now I've created the folder. Good. That's you can do that. And by the way, you can do that on the terminal as well. That's actually a fun thing to learn how to do. But for this experience, we're just going to keep it through the command line. Now I'm going to go close this. I'm going to go down to VS code or open VS code from here. And now I'm going to open the folder. So if I open the folder, I'm going to navigate to that folder I just created and say select folder. So now we can see that base folder. So what's going to happen is this is where those three repos or new folders it's going to feel like are on your system. Okay. So I'm going to go to terminal. I'm going to go to new terminal. And notice how by default it's using bash for me. And notice how by default it's in that directory that is opened here. One command, if you're ever in one and curious what folder you're in, you do pwd. And just FYI, if you ever needed to, you could make dir is a make a directory. You could also do that same step uh, that we did in the GUI in the file explorer here as well. Okay. So the command you're going to use, making sure you're in this folder, right, is going to be git clone. Okay, now we're going to stop right there. So git space clone. And now I'm going to move back over to GitHub here. I'm going to go over to here. I'm going to go to, and in this case, I'm going to do the private one first. And I recommend you do this one as well, because this one is going to require you authenticate into GitHub. So I'm going to click in here. You go to your, your now, by the way, when you go to that CIT 82, you're going to start seeing something different because as students add into the class, you will see something different. So I'm going to come down here over here to code and there's, it says clone and this is where we're it, you you can almost think of clone as a copy but it's actually a more sophisticated copy because it's creating a relationship between my local system and github so i'm going to keep it as https um, in other classes like todd mcleod i think he uh, teaches ssh which i love that he teaches that to show students other ways to do what we're about to do so I'm going to copy this. You could just select that and do it, but I'm just going to use the interface because it's just easier. 
So now I'm going to come down to VS Code, and I'm I got my first the command git clone and now I'm going to paste in so you can do it like that using the keyboard shortcut but I believe you could also yeah if you just right click here it automatically pasted it in so when I do this part it's going to authenticate me so I'm going to kind of slow down and show you the steps here because this has changed in the last couple of years about the way they do this I used to use something called web tokens which you could still use and I might depending on what this looks like because honestly I haven't had to do this piece which is re-authenticate in about a year so let's see if this changes so I'm going to hit enter and it's cloning ah here we go okay so what it's doing here is and i hope you get something like this it's it's saying you can sign in with your browser or you can sign in with a code or you can use a token okay now i am going to use a token because i think that works best so let me show you and you could try you could go ahead and sign into the browser that's the other way it's called an extension that it adds on but i think tokens are great because you just kind of see where they come from and the reason we use tokens, as I move back over to VS Code, I go over to my profile, but I go down to settings. Okay, I go to settings. The reason we use tokens is because we don't want to send our passwords over the wire, so to speak, if you've ever heard that term. So in my GitHub in settings, I'm going to go to the very bottom and I'm going to say developer settings. Under developer settings, there's personal access tokens and tokens classic is what we're going to go to and we're going to generate a new token. Now I'm going to generate a token that I'll delete so because I don't want <laughs> the general uh, YouTube audience to know. Uh, this is beta so we'll just use the generate new token and we'll call this uh, demonstration. You can call it whatever you want here. Uh, you can set it to expire. Uh, we could uh, set it up, um, you know, no expiration. It's not probably the best security, but for our purposes, it might make it easier. Uh, I could do a custom, which I, oh, well, this is wonderful. This is a new interface. So I could actually set this to expire at the end of the semester. You can see when I'm doing it here. And so I could go, I could go, okay, let's go to the end. Let's go around March. Oh, sorry, 23. Yeah. So let's go here. There we go. Because I think this class ends around March, something like that. I'll just go to the end. So, you know, find out what the end of our, the semester you're in. And then I'm just going to give it, and now this is where there's a lot of content here. And the, really the only thing you need is the ability to, I think the only thing you need is what I've selected, which is the first one, which is just the repos. So let's see if that works. I believe it will. Okay, so now again, I'm going to generate the token. And then what happens here is it only shows it to me once. So I'm going to copy that. Okay, I've copied it. Remember again, this token cannot be used. You will generate it on your side. I'm going to come back to VS Code. Actually, I'm going to come back to another window that's setting here open. And now I can just right click and paste that token in and I can sign in. Okay, so a couple of steps there and it looks like it works. Now, how do I know it worked? First, let me just slow down and show you again, you know, over here where I went, I went to here. I went to settings, I went to developer options and generate token. Remember, you got to grab that when you first do it because afterwards, like right now, I can no longer see that token. You can only see it when it's created. So you can give it a name, you can expire it at the end of the class. That's probably a good way to do it. I love that they added that option. Okay, so now look at this. We have, now you can see it here. Like if we were to look at the folder structure right now, I could go into documents. I could go into CIA T80. And then, and then I would see that private folder because it's added a folder, but that folder is really a repo that we've caught or we've cloned locally. So let's do the same thing now uh, for the public. Uh, one. So it's basically a the similar thing. I'm going to go to CIT82. I'll just go here. Go back to the organization. I'm going to go to I'm going to go to public now and I'm going to do the public repo. I'm going to grab that same URL 
I'm going to come back to GitHub. I'm going to do git, okay, git clone again. Actually, let me clear so you don't have to see the rest of that. Okay, so making sure I'm still in this root directory because all of these three repos should be setting here. I'm going to do git clone and then I'm going to right click or paste and put that in there. And then because I've already authenticated, and that's the key I want you to know. And actually, for the public one, you don't have to authenticate, but that's why I showed you the private one first. So now there's one more, okay? So what is that other one? It's the one that we're using for your GitHub pages. So let's go and do that one as well. Uh-oh, that won't work. GitHub.com. I'm going to go to my... And this is where you would go to yours. I'm going to choose, I have to go to repos because I have several, but you should have that one there. I'm going to go to my GitHub IO. I'm going to do a copy. Uh, and this is copying the URL for um, where to clone, what it's cloning. So it's giving it the location. I didn't tell you that before, but that's what it's doing. And so now we do that same thing, git clone, and then right click or however you want to do it. And now this is where you should end up, okay? At the end of this assignment, uh, we're not actually at the assignment, that'll be next, because I'm gonna show you how to actually do what's called the workflow at this point, and we'll talk about that next. Uh, but at this point, you have successfully cloned these three repos that are, two of them are from our course organization, one is from your own, and then when you open VS Code, you can open this base directory and you will always have access to all three of them. So now I think we'll, this will be enough for this particular one because we've gotten you through two major steps here, uh, which is setting up that folder and then cloning those three repos. Now we actually gonna help do what the assignment call or start what the work calls for for this week.